Everyone is focusing on leadership and qualities which are interpersonal. When you go to a position which is high enough to lead, how important is that technical stuff? I mean, I think the, the short answer is both. Um, I, I think you, you need to have the technical acumen to work your way up. You need to prove yourself to yourself, to your colleagues, to your higher ups. And along with the technical acumen, you need the communication skills, you need the leadership skills, you need to make sure you give credit where credit's due. Um, so for example, I have a colleague here who helped me with my talk. It would, I don't think I did your help justice, but you know, you need to give credit where credit's due. You need the technical acumen so you can participate within a group setting. We don't engineer in a box, right? We have colleagues, we have clients, we have bosses, all who we need to interact with and make sure that we're kind of the full package. So yeah, I'd, al I'd also say it's both. Um, you got to have some technical background or you'll say something and people will be like, he doesn't know what he's talking about and move on. My way of networking and working with people is kind of messy and not very structured. I'll just talk to anybody. <laughs> and it's helped me a lot. Like a um, couple of examples, like one time I, I decided to, to come to Arizona, Facebook something, found out I knew people went and hung out with them. That turned into me helping a student section start there. And then they wanted Honeywell to have someone come and show up. So there's space and defense and there's aerospace. I was switching them every semester, so I was like, I need to find someone in space and defense. I've never worked there. I don't know anybody up there. Just started mailing people, got a contact, had this guy show up. He was really nice, hung out with them. You know, we're leaving. We go to a bar, have a drink. You know, he, he actually hired <coughs> a student. It was a good experience. And then my boss was like, uh, so I want you to do this rotation, but I don't have anybody for you to rotate with. You've got to find someone that's going to let us send you to you and stay there for a couple of months. And I was like, oh, I met this guy. And he's like, how do you know the director of space and defense? Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> Needless to say, I got a rotation at space and defense for a couple of weeks. So the other day, I also had a, saw a giant white box in our office. And I was like, what's that doing? And, I went over and looked at it, found out it's a case for a 3D printer, and it had the guy's name, who it is, so I went to his desk, and now I get to build 3D printers at work, yes. <laughs> you know, stick your nose out there, and you'll see a lot of fun stuff. It'll I'll, take you places. I'll, I'll add that it's both as well, but there's a sequence to it. How you get there is the technical knowledge, right? But <clears throat> how you stay there and how you uh, excel is you have to learn about the leadership portion about people, because managing people is hard. It's, it's really tough, um, and it's, it's full of pitfalls. And when I see brilliant people who fail when they become leaders, whether it's of companies, departments, divisions, whatever, it's because they stopped learning. They thought that the, the technical side was enough. It's not. You have to keep learning. You have to realize you're going to make some mistakes, but you learn from those, those mistakes. But the leadership portion of it, um, the people portion, the relationship building, it's all really real, and it's a lot different than the technical side. So I, if for, for that kind of path, I'd urge you keep learning about that, the leadership part of it.